Cardi, it is always a pleasure to speak with you. Mad respect for you and everything that you've done in your career. Matt, how are you holding up through you know, this whole COVID-19? Uh, it's been a little bit of a while that, since we've had a chance to actually speak, but we've talked no. for so many years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you know, I can, t- I can tell you, Rudy, like this has not not, 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 not been easy. You know what I'm saying? In terms of everything, really, uh, when you think about your professional career and your professional life, um, well, let me, let me, let me scale it back. Let me, let me kind of bring it back because you, you know how, how my mind works as well. Let me say that there has been incredible blessings that have come from this because it's either like, you know, Win, wins and lessons, you know what I mean? So I think there has been the time for me to reflect with intention on my professional career, on my personal life, on the work, the work personal life balance, on things that you place importance on, on relationships, on so many things over this year and change. So how have I been? I've been... Uh, probably like a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? To where, um, you know, I believe in a higher power and I feel like God put us in a time where we had to come face to face with a lot of stuff that we probably have been running from, you know, like just in the rat race as Bob, as Bob would say, you know what I mean? We're in the rat race, just a chase the cheese. Um, but we've been neglecting stuff for a long time and, and just pushing it to the side, suppressing it. So, um, I'm not gonna lie. I, I will say that um, even though, you know, as we're coming, hopefully, as we're coming towards, I don't wanna say the end, but as we are figuring out how to move forward, um, things look different for me, uh, but, I, but I think that they look better in a, um, you know, according to how I would like to live my life. I think things are looking better and it's not easier and it's not necessarily what I thought, you know, for my life at this point in time, but the, the changes, it's not up to me, you know, it's not, it's not up to me. So, so yeah, just figuring, figuring it out and continuing to, to live in gratitude, actually, you know. Blessings to that. You know, the toughest thing that I found for myself, it wasn't even so much as, you know, the COVID, you know, having to stay home and things like that. The toughest mm-hmm. thing for me, though, was seeing people who I have associated with for years and almost seeing their true sense during that first part of COVID, because during Mm. that time dealing with Black Lives Matter and, you know, Mm. all the things that were going on with, with racism and, um, you know, people who you, I thought I knew, and then things I would see posted, suddenly I'm seeing something different from certain people. And the thing that yeah. I found as I'm coming out of this is I look at people and I look at things differently. People who I probably wouldn't have given two cents for, now I have so much respect. And people who I mm. at the time had so much respect, now I'm looking like, you know, stay away from me because you've shown your true sense. Were yes. you ever going through something like that too? Because there were a lot of revealing things that were going on from that U.S. election, Black Lives Matter, yeah. um, you know, so many different things. Yeah, still going through it. Still going through it. Um, here's here's the thing, the the black diaspora or diaspora, depending on who you are. But you know, the black diaspora. Uh, here's the interesting thing that I that I see that I've that I that I see and that I've saw is that things happen um, to black Americans in the U.S. And what happens, and it's, it's we have an interesting lens and an interesting perspective, is that you then have Canada, you then have the UK, you then have France that look at it. Um, and there are people that are like, oh man, glad we're not those type of oppressors. Glad we're not those type of colonizers. But, you know, it's, it's very interesting because we all sit in these various communities around the world and we're like, your hands are not clean. We suffer the same things. We may communicate differently because our culture within Canada and society, we deal with things differently, but it doesn't mean that we don't deal with it. 
Um, I think what it was, and, you know, I don't even want to conflate the whole issue, like talking about like Black Lives Matter in particular, because what happened was, um, you know, BLM was a specific group, you know what I'm saying? What it was, was it was an awakening of, um, and not even for us, it was an awakening for others to realize what we had been going through. And, you know, I say this very carefully and cautiously, but only so that comparatively you can understand and maybe have empathy for what Black people are going through. I totally continue to be crushed as they continue to find these, not just the residential schools, but like the, the burial grounds that they have. And I think that's being polite. Um, as we continue to discover what these people have done to the indigenous people of this land. But here's the interesting thing though about that. People are, you know, people as they should, people like they're just sick. They're sick to their stomach because they can't, they can't, it's hard to reconcile with your history, but think about, and, and again, I'm not doing this to take away from that. I'm doing it to, to cast light on black people because here's the thing. There are thousands of unmarked graves with slaves that were murdered. You know, you can't do burial sites in the sea. So there's just a, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot that has been going on and it is very traumatic. But what I would, you know, what I would say is that you're, you're right. Um, I think at the very least what we got from it was we got to peel back layers and understand how some people do not have a lot of empathy, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to Black people. And I know that there's so many different issues because there's like, you know, there's Black people, but then it's like they try to transfer that to all BIPOC, the whole BIPOC community. But we also, we have different things that happen to us. Anti-Black racism is not the same as, um, you know, the stop Asian hate that was going on. There are different types of experiences. Um, you know, people of South Asian descent, they have different experiences. Uh, people from the Middle East, they have different experiences. Palestinian people, they have different experiences. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. There are so many different things that I think, unfortunately, the murder of George Floyd was the catalyst for. And he is not, you know, he's not a hero. He did not choose to do this. He went to the store, you know what I'm saying? Like he just did an everyday, uh, everyday act of life. And even if you look at, uh, oh my gosh, what was the movie called with Joey Badass? I was on Netflix, 32 minutes. It won an Oscar, I think, short film. Was it Two Distant Brothers? I know what you're talking about. I can't think of ah, it right now. Whoever, but I know yeah, whoever's about. watching this, just Google it on Netflix, yeah. Joey Badass, it'll, it'll come up. But it's so interesting because at the end, they did a list of all the people that were murdered just doing regular things, driving to work, mm -hmm. uh, going to the store, playing in the park, so forth and so forth. So, you know, people talk about reconciliation, but I, I, I don't think that is what is happening right now. And I don't even think that's the proper language that we should use around these things. It is definitely a way of... Um, um, what's the word of softening the blow to what is actually happening and what we are discovering in several different communities. Um, but, you know, I hold people to task, not as a, a, a witch hunt, but I hold people to task because the reality um, is the reality. And the thing is that we've known what our reality is for a long time, just because <laughs> it's like, it's like me walking down the street and discovering a homeless person. And me being, or seeing a homeless person, that's my friend. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're homeless? In my mind, my point of reference, if this is a friend of mine that is homeless, all I, I'd, how did he get here? And all of a sudden I'm trying to figure out everything that's going on. I'm like, Gee, did this have something to do with me? Da -da -da -da, whatever, whatever. But his lived experience, he could tell you the whole, he could tell you the whole story as to how he got to where he is that day that you quote unquote discovered him. And I think that's the same thing that happened with us is all of a sudden, like I, there's many friends, I say that loosely, colleagues, different people that had their own 
they had to deal with it however they wanted to deal with it. They would cry and apologize and a lot of weird stuff. And to me, I'm like, well, what did you think we were talking about the 10, 20, 30, and 40 years that you knew me that I've been telling you that this stuff has been happening? You're only seeing it now because it's on the internet. Like, we listen, as Black people, we had to figure out how to continue every day with all of that. And I want to jump in there very quickly, and this will be the last question we're going to ask about this because we've got other things to talk about too. But that what you just said is something that has triggered me for a long time. And I wanted to ask you, because I would see this in the media, people in media for, you know, whatever they'd have a show and suddenly they're crying about and whatever. And then the next day they're talking about baking or whatever else. Did the, How do you feel the media has covered this? And do you think that they're being honest? And again, this is just your opinion. Were mm. they being honest with their coverage or was it, which what bothers me sometimes is as if this is the new, and I'm going to use the term fad to be on, and then yeah. the next thing that comes up again, jump on that. Because I even wrote on my Facebook too, if people are really going to be serious about this, be serious. Don't just, you know, start crying and express, oh, this is hurtful, whatever. And then completely forget about it because now you're not hearing much about it. Because this is something that I live with from the day I was born. It is so sad. And obviously excluding people like you um, within the media space. The media is the media, bro. It ain't nothing new. You know what I'm saying? Public Enemy, I was watching this James Baldwin clip just now where he was talking to this um, talking to this woman. And this is uh, Lena Waithe uncovered it. It's something that uh, one, of the, um, one of the TV stations had buried. And it was an interview with James Baldwin. And he was like, I guess at the time he was 47. He's like, nothing has changed in the 40 odd years since I was a seven year old boy. And I feel the same way. I was in the seventh or eighth grade singing Don't Believe the Hype by Public Enemy because he was talking about the media and how they twist stories and what it is that they do and news cycles and all the rest of it. Chuck D told us, what is that, you know, 30 years ago, 30 odd years ago. Uh, the truth is that the media does what the media does. And unfortunately, we, we sit and we watch it happen to where it's clickbait. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's um, you know titles and stories that are going to get you to go to their websites you know what i'm saying and you know seeing as the 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 circulation of newspapers isn't happening anymore well they need to get readers to their sites they need the traffic so you know what it is it's it's the it's the thing of the month it's the thing of the week and then you know the media they're on to the next thing while the people that are actually suffering the people living within those stories continue to live with those stories so it's interesting because as hardcore as they were a year ago this time, literally a year ago this time, it's not, it's not the same. Because I say it oftentimes, and the funny thing is, I don't know, am I guilty because I don't say it to them? But I'm just like, hey, what happened to all these pledges that you made? It was so heart-wrenching and you're going to do everything within your power to make, where, where's that same energy? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it, exactly is, it up at the, is it up at the cottage? You know what I'm saying? Like, where are you the you know, like with your friends, like where, where is that energy? You know what I'm saying? At the time you were very quick. Yo, let's write this check. Let's write this check. All right, cool. Was it just the one time thing? Like to, you know, absolve yourself of all, whatever it is that you felt like, I don't know. And some people would say, Oh my God, that's a terrible way to look at it. So, you know, cynical and pessimistic. Uh, no, put the shoe on, you know, put the shoe on your foot. How would you feel? You know, because guess what? I still have to worry about how I raise my sons. I still have to teach my daughter about certain things. While you have the privilege of, you know, being able to just have your kids go to the park and that's all they're worried about. You know, when I go to the park, I have to, you know, monitor my kids for the same reasons as you, but also for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? Because unfortunately, as people of color, as Black people, there will be that day where somebody is gonna call your kids the N-word, where they're gonna suffer racism, discrimination. This is, this is, there is not, it doesn't matter if it's nine, 19, 29, it doesn't matter the age, they're going to have to come face to face with it. And all of a sudden their lives will change forever and they'll be carrying this weight with them. This is a feeling that people 
that are outside of the Black community or outside of the BIPOC community will not understand. But it is our reality every every single day. So, anyways, we've uh, you know we could go on about that for forever, but that's that's just kind of how I feel, man. And I and I absolutely agree with you. I just want to add in very quickly too. There is a video that uh, folks can see of a child who's playing in his. I do believe it's in his front yard. And he sees the police coming and he's bouncing a ball and he immediately hides behind a car because he's so afraid that he's going to be shot by the police. And I think that mm. really says it all. But, you know, you've never um, let things ever stop you. I mean, you're an executive right now, my friend, mm -hmm. um, which is an amazing thing. What you did and the people that you grew up with in this industry, what you folks did at the Junos representing hip hop in r mm. in canada uh yeah. i like I'm, I'm getting goosebumps again right now because i watched the whole thing how did it feel knowing from a young kid who was trying to just get anybody to notice him and the people mm -hmm. that he was with including like julie black and mishy me to seeing all of you on that stage representing mm -hmm. you know the 50th annual juno awards and representing this nation's hip-hop community what did that feel like mostly it felt good but mostly it felt good because we were see even as the words come out of my mouth it felt good because we were finally given the opportunity so some people would say well why do you, why is there a negative connotation with that is because we are still having to wait until somebody gives us the opportunity instead of giving us a seat at the table so that we can collectively create the opportunity together. You understand? We're still not, we still don't have a seat at many of those tables. So the reality is if somebody chose not to acknowledge us, if they chose not to celebrate us, yeah, sure, we'd be mad, but ultimately we wouldn't have been able to say, well, you know what, this was the collective decision of people from the hip hop community, the R&B community, never even mind race, but I'm just talking about like. So music and so um, my Wi-Fi is suspect sometimes. There you go. Sorry about that. Okay, my Wi-Fi chipped okay. out for a second. Okay. But um, but no, I mean, you know, it was great because like I thought the piece was awesome. You know, it was put together by uh, Matthew Burnett, Jordan Evans and Tanisha Scott. Uh, as well as Dalton Higgins, you know what I'm saying, with the alley-oop on that as well. So, uh, you know, the, in, the, the intention of it was awesome. The execution was dope. I think it was incredibly well-received um, by everybody, but it is one of those ones, it's, you know, it's, it's similar to celebrating Canada Day, where we're like, yo, we love where we live. And it's the same way that we love the music and the music, sorry. Sorry about that. Somebody okay. had called like the, the technology, the technology. But what I'm saying is that like it's it's very interesting because it's like we love the history of Canadian music and we love hip hop's place within that. So it was dope to be able to represent a small sliver of that, because that's the other thing is it's like there's so many artists that you want to show respect to. There's so many people that you want to acknowledge, but, you know, you only have six minutes to do so. Uh, it was an incredible thing. I'm, I'm very thankful that we were able to pull it off and have it be successful. But again, we've got a lot of work to do still moving forward. You know what I mean? To make sure that that wasn't just last year and then the next year we're back to the same old stuff. You speak the truth there. And you mentioned about Canada Day too. You're doing something very special uh, for all of us here in a form of a concert or concert series, what exactly is happening? How, what, how is this working? Because the word free and music put together is something you know people are gonna love, especially right now during <laughs> tough times and we need to come together and music, especially yeah. your music brings people together. Well, listen, this is not, this is not, a, this is not about me. And the funny thing is like, I, I toil with it because uh, you know, you, you know, you could be cliche and say, you know, be the change that you want to see and all the rest of that stuff. But it's like how I feel is I'm like, yo, man, like. The pe like the people have not been able to come together and enjoy uh, music outside 
together. They haven't been able to have a communal experience that, that isn't virtual in well over a year, almost a, almost a year and a half. So I'm like, yo, first of all, what can we do to change that? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's put on an event. That's number one. But number two, most people, like, it's quite, it's quite possible for me to just, you know, charge tickets. Say, yo, tickets are 20 bucks, 30 bucks, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, have the people pay to get in. Nah, like, I, w- I wanted it to be kind of a give back, a gift, a, a welcome back. You know what I'm saying? I wanted us to to celebrate together. So that's why it's called, you know, that's part of the reason why the name is called Free the City. Um, the funny thing was that I wanted to do this months ago before the last lockdown happened. So it took on a different connotation. You understand what I'm saying? After the last, after the last lockdown, you know what I'm saying? Like free the city was free up our minds, our spirits, our souls, our energy. But then it almost became literal in terms of yo, let us out, you know what I'm saying? Like free the city, let us get out of our, you know, our, our homes have become jails, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I, un- listen, I understand and I'm not gonna downplay the purpose. I know what the supposed intent was, but what I'm saying is it's like, you know, personally, me personally, I feel like where we live in Ontario and parts of Canada, we may have got this last little bit wrong. And I say that from having visited other places and saw firsthand and been like to see how it works, you know what I mean? Or how it could work. I've seen it firsthand. And I've also, you know, we have friends, family, colleagues in different places, and we see how they're making it a possibility. So, you know, I have been the number one complier to where I've stayed home. You know what I'm saying? 95% of this whole thing. I've stayed home. I haven't went anywhere. I haven't gone to a relative's house. I missed funerals. I missed weddings, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But uh, nah, it's time. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's time to free up. And it's like, yo, as long as people are, are responsible and people are safe, I don't think I have an issue at all with people being able to, 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 to free up, you know what I'm saying? Like, so free the city. I'm not saying to just be reckless and all of a sudden everybody's, you know, we're, we're raving and we're tongue kissing and doing all kinds of stupid, you know what I mean? But it's like free up. So that's where free, free the city came from. But, you know, the other thing was, I'll, you know, I asked several DJs and several artists to donate their time, you know what I mean? To do it for free for the people. And, you know, those, you know, those people didn't hesitate, but you know, thinking about it, those people deserve the love as well because they've been online, you know what I'm saying? They've been on Twitch, they've been on IG Live, they've been on all these different platforms, you know what I'm saying, to where it's like they're DJing to the people for free. I know I did it as well, you know what I mean? Several times you're DJing for free, you're performing for free because it's like you want to do your passion, you want to be out there and you want to perform for the people, but you don't have the opportunity. And I'm blessed, you know what I'm saying? Like I've diversified my career years ago. So I have different income streams. So when one, you know, when one faucet turns off, there's all, you know what I'm saying? Like I, a whole other story again, like a whole other conversation in terms of like the hip hop generation growing up and understanding and trying to have better business acumen. But, you know, the reality is that those guys, they need the love too. And to me, whether it's a thousand dollars, 10,000, $50,000, whatever it is, I'm taking that money, and of course, I'm not taking any of it, but I'm taking that money, being transparent, dividing it up, and giving it to those guys to show love, to say, you know what I mean, to say thank you for all that you have done during the pandemic as well. So I just think it's one of those things, man, where I think it's dope, you know what I'm saying? I see the energy that's that's swirling around in the city right now, and it's, you know, it's it's funny because we... We sometimes say that we want these things, we want for there to be this energy. Oh, we're Toronto, we're Canada. But you know, the interesting thing is that, you know, when you you see something like this, um, you also, again, just going back to your, you know, you talk about media and so forth. You know, media is not really interested um, a lot of the times uh, in the real problems or the real solutions. You know what I mean? Um, It's funny because I went and, you know, just like how the Grammys, how there's some people that are, you know, via satellite and whatever, you know, some of my, you know, some of my, some of my friends um, have participated in this, you know, people from Sean Paul, you know, Michael Che from SNL and others. And it's like, 
people want to talk about that instead of talking about the event and what it means and why we're doing it and where we are as a society. You know what I'm saying? There's so many different things. You know, we talk about the issues that are going on between the Toronto police and the homeless evictions happening in the parks right now. Yes. We talk about, uh, you know, going back to the our Indigenous brothers and sisters with the, you know, people discovering all these, these residential school, you know, I don't even, for all intents and purposes, the, 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 the unmarked grave sites, um, you know, the anti-Black, there's all this stuff going on, but yet people are still more concerned with the sensationalized headlines and so forth. And it's like, you know, that's, you know, that's the same reason why people are like, well, you know, why didn't you go to this government organization and try and get funding or go here or go there and do all this stuff? And you know what? I wanted to try and keep it organic, keep it pure. So that when people come there that night, they are not going to be hit over the head with messaging that has nothing to do with the vibe. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I got to say, you know, shout out to, you know, Gina, Master T and the whole crew from RX Music, you know what I mean? Who so graciously sponsored this to Gary Slate, Derek Ross from Slate Music, you know what I'm saying? To, to Shane and those guys that over at Sony Music Canada, like, you know, there are so many people that like didn't like, like just you know cardi you need it this is what you want to do i think it's an incredible cause and we got your back you know what i'm saying and i think that is it's so dope and it's dope to know that there are those people out there uh that share that same kind of passion and we've all we've all suffered you know what i mean we've all suffered and the truth is i'm not going to pretend like you know my level of suffering is the same as as somebody who lost their job and lost their home and, and you know what I mean? Doesn't, you know, doesn't know where to go or is still trying to figure it out, you know what I'm saying? So I realize my blessings, but I also realize my opportunities and the platforms. And that's why, you know what I mean? It's all about free the city because that's what we, you know, that's what we need to do, free it up so that people can have those opportunities to earn, you know, to earn a lot more than just money, but you know, to, to earn back their dignity, their respect, to earn back the ability to grieve to celebrate, to do all, you know, to do all these different things. So that, that's why I'm doing it, man. And, and hopefully, you know, my, my, my dream and my prayer is that this is like, you know, um, one of, one of many. When is this going to be happening and how do we get involved with this? Ah, well, uh, Wednesday, June 30th down at city view drive-in. So you can go to cityviewdrivein.com. Uh, the unfortunate part is that it's it's a wrap it's all sold out i'm not surprised <laughs> but yeah it, it 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 literally i put the tickets up tuesday at 4 16 p.m obviously for the 416 i put the tickets up and by 4 17 they were, they were gone so <laughs> um did you blink? listen Yo, literally, I looked at my phone. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. We just put it up. Um, but there, listen, there, there literally are just a handful of tickets that I for sure just put in my pocket that we will be giving out uh, up until Wednesday. There's not many, um, but there, there are a handful that we're going to give out. Each ticket represents a car because this is a drive-in thing. So what happens is when you go and you're in your car, you're allowed to get out of your vehicle, but you have to stay within the, uh, you know, kind of the, the area of where you are parked. Yeah. So, and that's to, you know, to keep it, you know, to the safety precautions, the safe, the COVID safety measures and so forth. Um, but each ticket represents one vehicle. So that means, you know, Rudy, if you got a Suburban and you mm -hmm. get that one ticket, you can bring your other six friends, you know what I'm saying? So the seven of you can go down and enjoy that show. So, you know, I will I will be giving out um, tickets through, uh, you know, um, one or two radio stations and then probably, you know, just follow me at Cardinal O uh, for your chance to win uh, to win a ticket or so. But, yeah, it's you know, we went to do the site visit yesterday and it's it's going to be incredible, man. I'm, I'm super excited for this. It's going to be a legendary, beautiful night. You know, when you say the word legendary, it goes back again to your career because aren't we celebrating an anniversary with a ah. certain album that we... <laughs> Am I Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the 20th anniversary of Firestarter Volume 1, Quest for Fire. Absolutely. The 20th anniversary. It was in May. Was it May? April. Damn it, Rudy. I, for, I, I think it was in April. It was in April. Sorry, my bad. <sighs> April 10th. April 10th. Yes. Did you ever think yeah. putting this together that it would be so well received and 
have such an everlasting, not just presence, but impact on future uh, hip hop artists? I mean, as we say in hip hop, for everybody that was outside at that time, <laughs> um, we, different times, Rudy. So it's like, RB, when, when, we, were, when we were doing that, we just had hope. We just wanted for people to hear us. Mm. That was the biggest goal at the time was the exposure. And, and just so that people could hear what we had to say, you know what I mean? See how we did things. So it's like, you know, coming out with a very boastful song like Bacardi Slang. And I say it's boastful because I said in the hook repeatedly throughout the song and everybody knows it's the T dot. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it was so amazing for for me and my crew to go to, a, you know, tour America um, and for people to say, yo, what up? It's the guys from the T dot. Yo, who that? Card now? What up? You know what I'm saying? To go to Jamaica, to go to Europe or, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that was something that had not happened to that level. You know what I'm saying? And just seeing the effect that it had on future generations and, you know, how people to this day are still, you know, affected by it. It, it was an incredible time. Um, and I, you know, I, I have the amazing blessing and privilege of still being very active within the global hip hop community right now. You know what I'm saying? Both on the executive side, behind the scenes and very much in front of the scenes when it comes to, you know, the, the other beauty is that, yo, listen, we, we started to get booked again for these shows. You know what I mean? So we're starting to travel again, do these shows, do these DJ gigs, um, you know, getting back to the, 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 um, you know, to the philanthropy, so many different things, man. So, uh, you know, I, did I, did I hope and pray and, you know, in my crazy mind, like, did I think this would be sustainable? I mean, I was like, yeah, that's the dream. Um, but when it actually, you know, when the dream materialized and, and, and formalized, I was like, man, oh man. You know, that's, it's something, it's something awesome, bro. But I think, you know, um, one, one thing that I, one thing that I love that I heard the pandemic was, you know, how disgusting and egotistical is it when a person says that they are self-made, you know, and that's, that's not who I am. This thing that you're describing, it's, uh, you know, the gift sure was, was, you know, it, it flowed through me. Uh, but it was not possible just because of me. I had the whole city behind me, you know, really, literally, I had the whole city behind me. And, and uh, that is something I'll forever be grateful for. And that's, that's the reason, you know, still to this day, while we're doing, while we're doing free the free the city on the 30th. You know, it's, it's so funny, because I'm, I'm listening to you, and I'm literally trying to wipe a tear out, because I am so happy, and proud of you. And I'm thinking to myself, and damn, I was there for when that album came out and we were talking back then. Rudy too, was outside. You know, Rudy was outside. Because, you know, I always think about myself, Mike Williams, of course, Master T, yes. you yes. know, Dalton. You know, there was a small core of us that mm -hmm. really wanted to make sure that we promoted your music, promoted you, and, you know, yes. said you and Michi and the rest, you know, Thrust. And, mm -hmm. you know, it just, gives joy in my heart in knowing and seeing what all of you have accomplished. Like literally, I'm just like, I'm wiping the tear. Hmm. I'm just so happy for you and the whole community and how the community rose and keeps rising. And you yeah. are the example of how to rise and sustain, which is so important. Mm. As we yeah. wrap this interview up, um, mm -hmm. You know, Barry White always talked about, you know, sustaining and, you know, always being able to have that presence no matter what. Mm -hmm. What is your secret, would you say, to have, quote unquote, in one of his songs, he says it, staying mm -hmm. power. What mm -hmm. is your philosophy for staying power? <laughs> um. I just have a philosophy for life is just do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the, that's the core of everything, the foundation of everything. Um, you know, when, when a man like 
Dalton said, hey, listen, can you do this thing for, for Rudy? Before he even finished the sentence, I'm like, yo, I'll always do something for Rudy, anything that he wants, because he has always, always, always promoted me, shared his platforms and made time, you know what I'm saying, to educate the people, to expose me, to show, you know, uh, to show everybody what I've been doing forever. So I think that you know, the same way that how I deal with you, Rudy, and how I look at you and how you've been so awesome at doing everything that you've been doing over many, many years um, is how I tend to, is how I tend to, um, sorry, my children clearly are just waking up. Mama, you got to wait for a second. Daddy's just finishing an interview. <laughs> um, Never yeah, thought I'd hear like, that 20 years ago. <laughs> bye. <laughs> but uh but yeah man it's like you know your network um you know i've said this over and over and i'll continue to say it because it still rings true it's not about who you know but who knows you you know what i'm saying when um you know when you're not in the room what are people saying about you how are they saying it about you why are they saying it about you and not that you should live your life concerned about you know, what people think of you, not in that way, but in the way that you try and live and, and, you know, have humility, be a part of your DNA. Um, you know, you try and do right by people. Um, you try and give out that energy that you want to receive. Um, but most importantly, the passion and the drive, the passion and the drive, you know, like, Anybody that knows me, it's a regular, it's a regular thing. I'm up at people, how do you do it? You know, you're married, you have three kids and a house, and you're doing, you know, you make time for charitable things. Uh, you know, you're doing music, you're DJ. It's, be it's because <laughs> that is what I love. And every day is a day of gratitude that I'm thankful that I can do what I love. I don't want to work beside you at that job. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that, that's the thing. I listen, and I'm not putting down those people that are doing that to pay their bills. But what I'm saying is that's not for me. I don't want that to be what my life is about. And I encourage anybody that is in any job. And if you are not happy and it's not fulfilling and you find your life going by without you feeling truly fulfilled, do what you can to change that, whether it's going to school whether it's watching YouTube tutorials, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? And that's just how I live. So if I got to work 10 times harder than somebody else so that music can still be the core and the nucleus of everything I'm doing in life, so be it. Because I'd rather work 10 times harder doing what I love than doing less work and hating every second of it. That's, that's sustainability to me. Amen to that. Cardi, thank you so much for making time for me. Thank you for all the interviews we've done in the past. Every love time. You. Love you. Love mad, you too, bro. Mad respect and congratulations on your anniversary, this concert that you're doing and future concerts and just everything that you do because you truly represent the people. Doesn't thank matter you, black or white. It is the people. Thank you so much for the interview. Every time, my friend, every time, every time, every time. Rudy, this was, this was dope, dope way to start my day. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, you know, hopefully it doesn't go downhill from here, but, <laughs> 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 but it was a dope way to start my day, my friend. Thank you. All right, man. Have a good day.